Well, today is the day when we're wrapping up the series we've been walking through together this summer. As we have looked together at that subject, if Jesus is Lord, then I will walk as he walks. Now, we're going to carry on the Jesus is Lord theme for the rest of the year. But today we finish up, and we're finishing up this up the way you should. And we welcome, by the way, folks who are here for Parents Weekend at Sanford. Today is going to be preparation for the final exam. Today I'm going to walk through everything I've been trying to say for the last 13 weeks, but I'm going to try to sum it up in a fairly brief message that's going to be very practical and very useful but it's important to, for us to understand because as we have been talking about over these weeks, if we're going to walk as Jesus walks, that doesn't mean our footprints walk beside him. It means we step into his footprints. We follow where Jesus leads. One of the things you'll find if you read the Gospels is it is impossible to study his life seriously without understanding this is the challenge that was central to his ministry. In fact, I really think this, if I had to sum up the ministry, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the call of Jesus Christ on the lives of people today, if I had to sum up the message of Jesus in two words, those two words would be, follow me. Follow me as Savior. Follow me as Lord. Follow me as a disciple. Follow me as a servant. Follow me as a minister. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Time after time, Jesus stepped into people's lives, and without apology, he said to them, follow me, and he changed everything. He walked up to Peter on the seashore, along with the others that were with him, and he said to them, follow me. And I imagine that as Jesus left them, as he walked down the seashore, he never looked backwards to see what they were going to do because he knew they were going to put the nets aside. They were going to leave their boats. James and John were going to leave their father and their family business, and they were going to follow Jesus. Follow me, he called out to Matthew, and he abandoned his work to become a disciple. And in the passage we read together this morning, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. What did Jesus say? He said this, there are only two ways that a person can walk in this world. He said, you either walk in darkness or you walk in light. And there's nothing in between. And the only way to walk in the light, according to Jesus, is to follow him. Boy, do we need to hear that message today. In recent years, it seems as though as we look at the society, the culture around us, we've had a lot of people who have heard about darkness and heard about light, but they're beginning to say, but the darkness is the light, and the light is darkness. They're beginning to say you can choose other pathways that are neither dark nor light. They're just kind of gray, and it's okay to walk that way, and God understands when you walk that way. But Jesus is the one who said, if you're going to walk in the light, then you have to follow me. So how can you follow Jesus? We've been talking about it for three months, but today I want to talk about how do you follow Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to give you a formula for following Christ. Simple, easy. I can promise you this. By the time you leave this morning, you can tell that formula to me or share this formula with people who ask you, so what happened in your church this Sunday? If you're going to be a fully devoted follower of Christ, you've got to choose to follow him. A total change in attitude from seeking to please yourself, from seeking to please others, to trying to please one person and one person only, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's learn this formula together. First thing you know is this. Following Christ means you have to make a decision to trust. In fact, trust is the first issue that has to be settled before you can make a decision to follow him. When Jesus called out to those men, follow me. When they made the decision, I will follow Christ, it means they trusted him. You know, if I'm going to follow somebody, it has to mean that I truly trust them. 
Let me tell you something. If you're find, try, trying to find directions from one place to another, and I say, follow me, I'll lead the way, you better be careful. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I have zero sense of direction. Now, I can look at a map. At, map For you students, that's the thing that you used to unfold and look at before there were cell phones. I can look at one of those things, and I can figure out how to go, and I can get there. But if you say to me, you know, go east for a little while and then turn south, and I'm going to say, east, south, what is that? You know, if I can see the sun, I can figure it out. I don't have an inborn sense of direction. In fact, what Judith has said about me for years is, don't follow my husband. He can get you to heaven, but he can't get you anywhere else. <laughs> Sometimes it really matters. It really doesn't matter that much whether somebody knows where they're going if you follow them. For instance, if I did say to you, follow me and I will lead you to Walmart. Well, you can get in behind me and you can follow me because the truth is if I get lost sooner or later, we're going to run across a Walmart, aren't we? <laughs> it's going to happen. On the other hand, imagine with me this morning facing something like like serious brain surgery. And the doctor walks into the room and he says to you, you know, I'm not really trained to do anything like this. The truth is I'm a podiatrist. I work on feet. But I've always wanted to do brain surgery. And if you'll trust me, I think I can get you through this. How are you going to respond? No brain surgery? Before you trust someone, you want to know they're trustworthy. And Jesus says, follow me. What makes you trust a leader? What makes you trust Jesus Christ? Well, there's three things I can think of that you need to know if you're going to trust somebody who's leading you to go anywhere or to do anything. Number one, you need to know they have experience. You want to know they've been this way before. Follow me because I know the way. I've done this many times. Follow me. I'll get you there. I'll never forget when we first moved to Haleyville, Judith and I bought our new house, the house that we lived in while we were there. But every time somebody took me to that house, they brought me by a different route. So I came from the high school one time, I came from the church one time, I came from over toward the hospital one time, and one time, yes, I came from Walmart. <laughs> and I remember thinking after we had signed the papers, well, isn't this something? I just bought a house and I don't even know how to get there. <laughs> but after a while, I did. Every way that I needed to go. I could take you to my house. I could say, follow me. I'll lead you to my house. And you could follow me and you could trust me that I would get you there. You know why? Because I'd been there 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. When you trust someone, you need to know they have experience. They can lead you. Second thing you need to know is this. If you're going to trust someone, you need to know they have knowledge that they can handle whatever comes up along the way. They understand what they're talking about. They know how to do things. And because they have knowledge, you're willing to trust them. And then the third thing is authority. They have earned your respect. I will follow you because I trust you. I trust you because you lead the way. If I ask you to name an important leader in American military history, we could come up with a lot of names beginning from the very beginning on, but I bet you the one name that would come up more than any is George Patton because he has a reputation that has lasted far beyond uh, the Second World War as that man his men trusted to lead them anywhere. And they would follow his leadership whether it looked easy or whether it looked hard, because he had the authority that let them know he was going to lead them and he was going with them. 
experience, knowledge, authority. To follow Jesus means being willing to trust him in all of those ways, in daily life and in eternal life. You have to make the basic decision, I will follow Christ. He knows the way. He knows the way. And that's the first step of our formula. I will follow Jesus. He knows the way. He's been there before. He understands how to get me to where I need to go. More than that, he has the authority to say to me, follow me, and I will pick up and I will go where he leads. To be a follower is to be convinced of the trustworthiness of the one we call Lord. Then the second thing the Bible says is this. If you're going to follow Christ, you have to make a commitment to obedience. The trustworthiness of the leader is not the only thing that is essential. It's also the response of the follower. I heard one man say, if a man is a leader and nobody's following him, he may think he's a leader, but he's really just a fellow taking a walk. That's true, isn't it? If nobody's behind you, you're not leading. And you can trust a leader, but if you don't step out and follow, then you don't really trust that leader. To be a follower, you have to be committed to doing what Christ tells you to do on a daily basis. Hear me, on a daily basis. If I ask you this morning, do you believe the Bible? Oh, yes, I believe the Bible. If I ask you this morning, do you believe Jesus is God's only begotten son? Oh, yes, I do believe he's God's only begotten son. Do you believe Jesus can show you the way that you need to go in your life? Oh, yes, I believe that. So are you doing those things? Are you applying those things to your daily life? I don't know. And if you're not, you're not following. Too many times we believe the right things, but nothing really changes in our life. You know what I mean? We've got all this stuff up here, but it never makes its way into our lives. It's like that great theologian that we all love together here, Barney Fife. <laughs> you remember that time that Barney and Andy are sitting on the porch rocking. It's a Sunday afternoon, and they're discussing their plans for later on, and Barney says to Andy, I know what I'm going to do this evening. He said, I'm going to go down to the drugstore, get some ice cream, go home, take a nap. Now I'm going to Thelma Lou's house and watch that new movie on television. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Go down to the drugstore. Get some ice cream, home for a nap, go to Thelma Lou's. That's the plan. Drugstore, ice cream, nap, Thelma Lou's. And finally that man standing on the porch, he says, well, get up and do something. <laughs> Which offends Barney to no end. And yet, you know what? That's how so many of us practice our Christian life. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the drugstore, get some ice cream, take a nap, go to Thelma Lou's. That's what I'm going to do. One of these days, when I get around to it, you're going to call yourself a follower sooner or later you have to get up and follow the life of a disciple is to be experienced not studied we're not supposed to just learn about what it means we're supposed to put it into action in our lives let me ask you a hard question this morning how long has it been since the fact that you are a Christian directly affected a decision you had to make when you were facing a choice, a decision, a conflict, a need, and the first thing you thought about is, because I belong to Jesus, how should I decide? What should I do? How should I act? 
of followers to be committed to active daily obedience to the Lord and his word. It is to make a basic decision. I will follow Christ. He knows the way, and I will go the way. He knows the way. I'll go the way. Then the third thing we need to know is this. Following Christ means you have a desire to testify. It's a third step in following Christ. Once you begin to walk in the light, you can't help but notice there are those who are still in the darkness. People all around you that are not walking in the light, and some of them are people you really love. And all you can think about is, what can I do to help bring them from the darkness into the light? You know, the whole world was transfixed a couple of months ago, weren't we, by those boys who were trapped in that cave in Thailand. You remember that? Those young boys who were scouts who were down there and people were trying to figure out how are we going to get them out? How are we going to get to them? How are they going to survive? And the whole world was transfixed by the need to bring those boys from darkness into light. The same thing is true of us as believers. It just doesn't seem right that we should enjoy the light when other people have only darkness around them. So you have a hunger to tell them and to show them what God has done for you and what he is doing in your life every day. I love a story. I've probably told it before, but it's worth telling again. About a man who struggled for years in his life with alcoholism. It consumed his life. It cost him everything. He lost his job. He lost his home. He lost his family. He lost everything to this substance that just stole everything away from him. And then he met Jesus. And the Lord completely transformed his life. And he got serious about his walk with God. And he was able to straighten up his life. And he was able to find a place to live. And then he got to bring his family home. And he found a good job. And he was able to support his family. And everything was different. And one day he was walking down the streets and he ran into some of his old drinking buddies. And they knew what had happened in his life and they knew they didn't see him in the saloons anymore because he was going to church now. And they began to laugh at him and mock him and they said, so you've become a Jesus guy now. You've become a follower of Jesus. And now they said, so you really believe all that stuff that the Bible says is true? Yes, I believe it's true. I believe it's all true. So... You really believe Jesus was able to turn water into wine. That's what the Bible says. So can you do the same thing? Can you prove that he could do something like that? And he said, you know something? He said, I don't know anything about, a lot about how Jesus turned water into wine. But he said, if you want to go with me to my house, I can show you where Jesus turned whiskey into furniture and a family. How he changed everything about my life when you've been changed you want other people to know what he's doing in your life you want to draw attention not to yourself but to your leader you want to call them out so out to them so that they don't have to wander alone in the darkness and try to grope their way through life you want them to know and follow Christ as well It is to make a basic decision. I will follow Jesus. He knows the way. I will go the way. And I want to show the way. And that's God's simple formula for a spiritual walk. I will follow Jesus. I want to walk as he walks. I want to follow so closely there's only one set of footprints in the sand. What do I have to do? I have to believe that he knows the way. I have to be obedient and go the way. I have to reach out to others and show the way. And that's the footprint of a disciple. So what about you? Do you know the way this morning? Do you know that the only way out of darkness and into light is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who comes into your heart and transforms who you are and changes your eternal destiny? Do you know the one who can save you? 
If not, then in just a moment when we have our invitation hymn, it'll be your opportunity to come. I would love to meet you, to introduce you to my Savior, because he can be your Savior too. Are you willing to go the way? Are you willing to say to the Lord, wherever you want to lead me, that's where I'm willing to go. I'll pick things up. I'll lay things down. I'll follow where you lead because you have the authority to tell me how to live. And maybe if you're willing to go the way, part of that is going to be hearing him call you to come to this place and plant your membership at First Baptist Church to be a part of what God is doing. Those things that Cynthia showed us earlier that make up a church along with the Lord Jesus Christ, a commitment to his word. Maybe you need to be part of what God is doing here. And are you willing to show the way to the people that you love, to the families that surround you, to those strangers that you encounter? Are you willing simply to say, this is what he's done for me. This is what he can do for you. We're about to sing our invitation hymn. This will be your opportunity to respond. If you'd like to come to know Jesus, I'm going to be right here. And all you've got to do is the music plays, is walk down these aisles and join me here. And I will introduce you, help you come to know the Savior. Or maybe you need to come down these aisles and say, I want to plant myself at First Baptist Church. Maybe there's another decision. We're going to stand, we're going to sing as God's Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You come. Let's stand.